the women's elimination chamber matchup with Asuka emerging victorious as the new number one contender to the Raw Women's Championship at WrestleMania. She outlasted Carmella, Nikki Cross, Raquel Rodriguez, Liv Morgan, and Natalia, Canadian uh, Canada Zone. And what was a very good chamber match, probably the best women's chamber yet. I know the bar isn't very high. Um, I actually really liked last year's chamber. It felt a bit rushed. That was the one in Saudi Arabia. Uh, we haven't had a lot of great women's chambers, but we haven't had a lot of men, you know, many of them, period. But I thought this one was quite good. Had the right result. I know you aren't on the same page as far as Oscar winning, and that's totally fine. Do you want to get your thoughts on that and the match itself? I thought it was a good match. Um, I guess my biggest p- complaint of the match was that Oscar clearly was the favorite going in, and just like. I don't know, like, it's, like, the same thing with the Royal Rumble. I don't love, like, the favor coming in last. It just kind of leaves, not the suspense, but it's just not as impressive. When she comes in last, everyone's already been there for a decent amount of time. She kind of just, like, picks up the scrap heap. It's just like the Royal Rumble. Like, Cody won. He says, oh, yeah, I outlasted 30 other guys. Like, did you? You came out last, and there was probably, like, 10 people in the ring at the time. So, it it is what it is. I mean, I think everyone knew she was going to win. Um... It is, it is what it is. I thought it was a good match, though, overall. I was a little upset Liv was the second person eliminated. I know she's over in Canada, but Natalia, I mean, come on. <laughs> it's just one of those things. I, 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 it's, I feel bad for Liv because I feel like she was kind of – it was not even the kind of. She was. She was just got the championship right when Triple H took over. Her booking has kind of been, like, all over the place. She wins the belt. She has those two kind of fluky wins against Ronda. Lose the belt to Ronda. Then she's crazy. She's putting people through tables. Then we don't see her ever again. And then now she's kind of seemingly seems like she's getting pushed against SmackDown. Um, I'm not sure if she needs like a to move to Raw in the draft or something. I mean, that SmackDown women's division has been the same six faces for the last year. So I'm assuming some kind of shakeup would be necessary. But uh, I felt bad for her being the second one eliminated. I, th- I feel like she had a good reaction and probably should have lasted a little bit longer. But Oscar beating Carmella made sense. Carmella's not going to win. Um, have, her, have her tap out a heel. The crowd went nuts. So. But that was a good match, though. I just didn't love how Oscar came out last. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Like you said, with the men's rumble specifically, they switched it up with the women's rumble by having the favorite and Rhea Ripley come out first, and then she won the entire thing. Also by beating out Liv Morgan to win the whole thing at the end. Uh, Liv Morgan was done dirty last week. She lost the six-woman tag team match on Raw. Of all the people that could pin in that match, it was her. I guess you're not going to pin Raquel, who is more protected than Liv, but still, she got she ate the pin in that match, and not Natalia. On SmackDown, she lost to Asuka when we went one on one, and then she was one of the first people gone in this match. Actually, she didn't last until the very end. It was down to Carmella and Asuka, which was fine because they're telling a story with Asuka and Carmella. It's like an interim TV feud. They're having a match next week on Raw. Carmella's been playing her role really well since coming back. Uh, Liv Morgan was just the odd woman out. But what do you think her? For Liv, now that we're on the subject of her, what do you think her road to WrestleMania looks like? Do you think with people like her, Raquel, who we had a chance to chat with, and I'll put up the interview at some point um, on the YouTube channel, but she was great to chat with both on camera and especially off camera to both of us. She was awesome. I want to see her do well. What, what do you think like the road to WrestleMania consists of for them? Do you think they just get paired up because they've been teasing an alliance and they get put in like a number one contenders tag team match at Mania? I don't really see another prominent match for Morgan and Mania, and I think she deserves to be on the card um, after being champion last year and getting really over. Yeah, it's it's very hard to say. Um, and that's like, I feel like it's so, not stereotypical, it's so lazy, like, oh yeah, put her in the uh, women's May Young, whatever they call it, the Battle Royal. I don't even know if they did it last year, but I mean, she deserves to definitely be on the card. I just don't really know exactly where you put her. Like I said, maybe they do... What they did a few years ago, and like the I think it was tw- thir- WrestleMania 36, like the first night they did like the f- the first con- uh, number one contenders for the tag team belts, and then the second night they had the match for the championships. That's right, 36, right? They did that at 37, I think. Okay, my bad, 37. But uh, I mean, I guess you do that because, like, like you said, I feel like her and Raquel definitely should be on the card. I think it would be a big mistake to not have them on there. But besides that, I. I mean, they're not going to face each other, obviously, or I don't see them facing anyone else, really, just for the for the heck of it. So you would you would have to do something like that. I think they're both big big enough that you wouldn't want to put them in a battle royal. But I mean, it seems like that might be the case. It's almost comical that Liv has had as many shots of the tag team titles as she has, and I don't think she's won it yet. Has she? Has she been a former tag team champion? I don't think so. No, she lost with Rhea, and she lost with. Um, who else was she teaming with? She teamed with Ruby, obviously. 
Yeah, but she teamed with. Didn't she team with someone else? She teamed with Rhea, Rhea and Tegan Knox as, as well. Yeah, I mean, I know she lost with <laughs> Rhea, obviously, and then she lost with someone else too. But I can't, I can't, I can't think of who it was. But like, so maybe Tegan, honestly. But yeah, yeah, were they gonna do her and Raquel? They're gonna lose again. I mean, she's just. I don't know. They, they, Liv is one of those people that they like to put with a partner and have her lose. It's. I mean, her and Ruby. The fact that the Riot Squad never got a tag team title run at all in any incarnation of that group on any brand, considering. The belt's been around now for four years, and a lot of teams that have held it aren't exactly teams. It's just comical. I mean, it's it's sad, but um, you know, at this point, now that the ship has sailed on that, her and Raquel can win the belts, and, and you know, cool for her. It really should have happened with Ruby when Ruby was still there. But regardless, I do like Liv. I would like to see her do something. I don't know. I just feel like with the women's divisions on Raw and SmackDown, there's so many talented women, and this is why I don't really mind the Chelsea Green stuff because I feel like they need to do a better job of normalizing feuds in those divisions that aren't over championships. The tag titles mean absolutely fucking nothing. I mean, that's just an excuse to get a tag team match on the card and then pretending like the titles on the line actually mean something. Spoiler alert, they don't. I would like to see more stories in the division that aren't over titles. Like, what they're doing right now with Asuka and Carmella is brief, and it's not going to last long with Carmella trying to dodge Asuka, and they've been telling that story since she came back a few weeks ago. I like that a lot. I feel like we need more stuff like that. And they were doing that, like you said, with Liv and Sonya. After Liv lost the championship, she was crazy. She beat Sonya in a pretty good match on SmackDown back in November, I think, and then it was it was nothing. She just never showed up again after that. And if she did, it wasn't really doing anything of note, so... Uh, we need more stuff like that. They have it with the men. I don't know why we don't have it for the women. I think, like, the Mandy Rose Sonya feud a couple of years ago was great. Like, that was based off of personal animosity, and they had a really couple, some really good matches. So, I would like to see that more with the women and not just, oh, number one contenders matches and six pack challenges. And if you're not going for the main title, it's back to the tag title. Like, it's just, to me, it's lazy. And they have enough women at this point where you can do more stories outside of the title picture. That makes sense. Like, they, they did it years ago. When SmackDown first, they brought back the brand split in 2016. You probably remember this, but not going to lie, they had a Nikki Bell and Natalia feud that was actually pretty good, and they had some really good matches. Mickey James and Becky Lynch, when Mickey first came back to the company in 2017, they had a really good non-title feud back at that point. Uh, Carmella and Nikki Bella, when they first did the brand split, also had a really good feud on SmackDown. So, more of that, please, and not this laziness where, oh, if I'm not going for the main title, then I go for the tag titles. Like, it just who gives a shit?